is going on YouTube? This is Sam with Team Samrux1 here, coming to you guys with a Casella deck profile for the January 1st, 2015 format. So I hope you guys enjoy this deck profile. And as I progress through the deck profile, I'll be explaining to you guys some of the card choices that I decided to play in this deck and the reasons why I play them. So guys, without further ado, let's get started. And of course, start off with the monsters we play. Uh, of course, triple Consolar Cows. Cows is absolutely amazing. Be able to, to of course, uh, level up uh, your Consolar Monsters to make uh, rank 5 XYZ. XYZ plays is absolutely amazing and of course making plays first turn is absolutely amazing uh, since you're able to control the board by bouncing back your cards and uh, your opponent's cards to control the game is absolutely amazing so you guys want to play triple cows and of course cows is searchable with uh, uh, 10 key and uh, with 10 key uh, when you have at least one 10 key on the board he becomes a 1900 beater and uh, if you have two 10 key of course he becomes a 2k beater and stuff like that so cows is very good and it's a beast warrior and as I said before it is searchable with uh, fire formation 10 key so uh, you want you guys want to play triple uh, consular cows uh, after the cows you guys want to pl uh, play triple consular Polux. Polux and cows are absolutely amazing uh, these two are the cards that you want to see first turn is either uh, cows uh, cows and Polux or cows and uh, algidi and how this combo works is that you normal summon Polux you activate Polux effect uh, the effect doesn't even activate uh, uh, when this card is normal summon this turn I get the effect is, uh, no to get an additional normal summon this turn so uh, window doesn't really do anything into this deck um, so yeah, uh, you summon Polux, you activate Pol uh, Polux effect activates, allowing you to normal summon Consolar Chaos. Uh, Chaos effect will activate, uh, leveling up Polux by to level 5 and leveling up itself to level 5. This making you uh, rank 5 XYZ, such as uh, Pleiades, uh, Volcosaurus, um, Zenmayo, uh, and stuff like that. It, it all depends on the situation that you're in. So uh, you want to play triple Chaos and of course triple Constellar Polux. And uh, Polux is a warrior, so it's definitely searchable with, uh, of course, uh, the reinforcements of the army. So triple Polux, triple Chaos. Next, you guys want to play uh, Polux's younger sister. Is of course you want to play double consular um, Algidi. Uh, Algidi serves as the same purpose as uh, Polux, but the bad thing about her is that um, you, uh, she can be chained onto the effect. So let uh, let's see. You normal summon Algidi. You activate its effect. Your opponent is able to respond to like Phoenix Chain or Maxi onto its effect. That's the only downside about her. But uh, but overall, she serves as the same pur purpose as Polux. Um, when this card is normal summon, you're able to special summon a level 4 Castellar monster from your hand. So you want to summon the Chaos, uh, and of course the same combo goes. Chaos levels up our GD. Chaos levels up itself, making uh, yourself go into um, a rank 5 XYZ play uh, from that. So, uh, of course, three Polux, three Cows, and two LGD. And, of course, uh, last but not least, we play the triple one card XYZ, uh, triple Consolar Zombre. Zombre is absolutely amazing, uh, really good um, mid game and late game, and especially even early game as well. You're able to go do some crazy combos with uh, Consolar uh, Zombre. This card, when you top deck during late game, uh, you're able to just um, make that one turn play these with, of course, a Zombre. You summon Zombre's, uh, ba banish. Um, uh, banish a monster, add a monster from your uh, graveyard to your hand, then special summon. Yeah. So yeah, you can banish one consolar monster from your graveyard, then target one consolar monster in your graveyard, add a target to your hand. Also, this card gains the following effect. This card, this turn, you can, you're able to get an additional normal summon this turn. So you, have to, you summon Sombres, uh, you activate Sombres effect, banish a consolar monster from your graveyard, uh, add a consolar monster from your graveyard to your hand, then uh, you can you you get you gain the effect of the additional normal summon this turn. So uh, of course the combo is uh, you summon, especially yeah. So you summon Consolar Polux. Uh, yeah. Wait, what is card? Yeah. Okay. So the combo is that okay. So you summon Polux. Uh, you summon Zombre. You activate Zombre's effect. Uh, to. Uh, to banish a Consolar Monster from your graveyard, uh, you add back a Chaos. You normal summon a Chaos. Uh, you you uh, you overlay. Uh, you, you normal summon the cows. You activate cows effects to um, where's the cows? Let me show you guys a better outlook. Yeah, so you activate a cows effect to uh, raise Polux by one and cows by one. Uh, overlay for a Pleiades, and um, next turn you get to activate uh, Zombies effect again um, on the field by being able to just you know make. Rank 5 XYZ to Zombies is absolutely amazing. Uh, and definitely, uh, Zombies is, of course, uh, it can be used as, as an OTK card. Uh, you're able to just easily uh, deal a lot of damage uh, alone with Consular Zombies. And uh, after that, after the damage, you're able to go into a, a big XYZ plays like Pleiades to make you have control of the game. So you guys want to play triple Consular uh, Zombies. 
uh, after uh, the Kinsella lineup, you guys want to play double Onus since you guys all know that Onus is now back at two. Uh, this whole entire deck is a light deck, so uh, Onus is just works really, really well with this deck. You're able to just sit on Kals, uh and just sit on it with Onus and stuff like that. And especially Onus is a rank four XYZ, so, uh, rank four, level four monster, so you're able to go into uh, rank four XYZs with Onus and stuff like that. And especially when you have Zombies on the field and you have Onus in your hand, you're able to protect the Zombies. Then next turn you can, you're able to go off with uh, Zombies on the field and stuff like that. So you guys want to play double on us. Uh, one bear, of course, bear searches out 10 key, and bear is used as a destruction, monster destruction card by by able to send uh, a 10 key to the giver to destroy one monster on your opponent's side of the field, which is absolutely amazing. So one bear, uh, this is the only non-light monster that you play in the deck. Uh, bear, bear is really good. Each time it deals damage, you're able to search out a cows from your deck to your hand by getting 10 key, of course. So uh, one, one bear, uh, one Thunder King Ryo. Um, Thunder King Ryo is absolutely amazing in this deck, and it's uh, not only is it a light, but it can be used uh, as a source of negation of your opponent's special summoning a monster. Um, people say that, oh, Thunder King is bad in this deck since you play six searchers uh, in this deck. You play three Rotas, and of course, you play three ten keys. But, you know, you're not going to activate Rota when you have Thunder King on the board. Like, by, by the time you already have Thunder King on the board, you're already in a great position where you're already locking your opponent down. Like, uh, Thunder King will definitely hurt your opponent more than it will hurt yourself. And once as soon Thunder King leaves the field, then you're able to activate 10 key and, like, Rota and stuff like that. But most of the time, if you open up with Thunder King, you will want to activate Rota and uh, 10 key first before you summon Thunder King. Like, who's going to normal summon Thunder King then, you know... You know, activate Rota or Tenki. You know, you have to be really smart about your plays and the way, and the way you play Thunder King. You know, uh, Thunder King is just a great card. I, I, w I would definitely uh, keeping this card um, in the main deck. Thunder King is just a really, really powerful card. If this card comes back to two, I would definitely play two in this deck. And of, of course, Thunder King with Honest is absolutely amazing. So I don't know why some people say that Thunder King is not a really good card in this deck, but in my opinion, this card is beast in this deck. It's amazing. So you play the. One Thunder King Ryo. And last but not least, to round off our monster lineup is I play one Photon Thrasher. Last format, I play DD Warrior Lady, but I feel like Photon Thrasher is a really, really strong card uh, if you're able to just search it up with a Rota. It's a Warrior. This is my fourth uh, reinforcement of the army target. Um, I feel like during late game, um, if you top like this, it's absolutely amazing. It becomes 2100. It's a 2100 beater, and it's a free summon. Um, uh, yeah, it's a free summon, and uh, if you're going um, second, and you know you're and you have Photon Thrasher in hand, you're able to do a lot of combos with Thrasher uh, by going to big rank four XYZs and stuff like that plays. So you're able to just summon Photon Thrasher. You summon Polok, summon Kaos, uh, um, or let's say you don't have Kaos uh, in this situation. So you have Thrasher in your hand. You you no, okay. Let's say you have let's say Polox and what's a good card. And I'll GD, okay? So this is the only cards you have in your hand, uh, the only monsters you have in your hand. The first turn that you're, you're able to do is, of course, you spread summon Thrasher. You, you can either sit on the Thrasher and sit on back rows and end your turn, but you guys like want to go crazy and are really aggressive, so you can special summon the Thrasher. Uh, normal summon Polux, special summon LGD. Uh, from this situation on, you're able to just uh, either XYZ with it or just leave it on the board by having three monsters uh, on the field for pressure on your opponent. Then you can set your back rows and stuff like that. So yeah, Thrashers can be used as a... Uh, as like in in like many cases and situations, you know, you summon the Thrasher, attack your opponent, and then you can uh, X Y Z with it and stuff like that. You know, and also this is a, a beta card. You know, this card beats out D Prison. This card beats out Bottomless. This card beats out a lot of cards. You know, so this card is basically saying, hey, when I summon this card, it's either I'm gonna attack you for 2100 or you're you're gonna get uh, rid of me and stuff like that. So I love Fourth for on Thrasher for that reason. But during game two and three, I usually side him up for uh, better cards, and I'll explain to you guys uh, that in my side deck. So uh, last but not least to end off our monster lineup is uh, one photon thrasher to round off our monsters that is it for our monsters now off to our spell cards i will go through the spell cards real quick for you guys so the searchers is i play triple reinforcement of the army uh since you play four targets in the deck and of course you want to get into your full looks as fast as possible since this whole deck is built around making rank five xyz's and rank four xyz's and uh especially when summoning first turn plays is absolutely crucial and it's uh very big and problematic for your opponent to deal with uh, next, you play triple ten key, searches out your cows and your bear. You have four targets for ten key. Uh, triple MST for the pendulum matchups and for the, uh, those back rows. Uh, I hate back rows, so Mystical Sea Typhoon takes care of that and, of course, takes care of uh, the pendulum matchups as well. Triple MST. Uh, next, for our staples, I play one Book of Moon, one Soul Charge, and one Snatch Steel. I do not main um, Regeki in the main. I side I side uh, Regeki since, uh, you know, in, in my opinion, I love to play more traps uh, in this deck more than I like to play spells. Like, sometimes I don't even want to play spells at all. Like, and, you know, 
I'm a trap. Uh, I'm a trap like kind of guy. You know, like I, I love playing traps. Um, you know, I love decks such as like uh, Constellers where you're able to summon Pleiades and set like so much back row. You know, that's like that's my playing style. So, um, so yeah. So I would prefer to run uh, an extra trap uh, rather than running the Reg Regeki, um in in the main deck. But you know, as format progresses, uh, I think. Um, I might be changing uh, some cards um, into the main deck, and maybe Regeki will see play uh, in the main deck. I'll be sure to make updates on this deck uh, as as format progresses uh, for you guys. So that is it for my spells. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve spells. Now off to my traps. Uh, I play one Mirror Force for my trap. Uh, Mirror Force, nobody expects this. So many people just overextend the board. And then uh, once they attack and I flip the Mirror Force, they're just like, what? You play Mirror Force? Like, you know, this card is very unexpected. The reason why people do not play Mirror Force is because of, uh, of the format where hands was really important. Like, people decided to drop Mirror Force. But now I feel like, you know, having that one Mirror Force is a surprise factor for uh, your opponent. So, yeah, I love to play that one Mirror Force uh, just for that surprise factor. And this card, like, don't get me, don't get me wrong, Mirror Force is a very great card. It it's able to clear the entire board that your opponent uh, tries to control. Um, you know, uh, if your opponent tries to go like really, really aggressive plays without throwing your back rows, people don't expect this mirror force. People just expect to have that one D prison. But you know, when you flip that mirror force, you know your opponent is like, wow, like what the heck just happened? Like what, like what is going on? You know. So I like to just main deck one mirror force. Um, next, I play double Phoenix chain. Uh, you know, in Castellers, you always have a heavy trap lineup to protect your monsters and your Pleiades. So double Phoenix chain, uh, double prison, one bottomless. One solemn warning, one compulse, double vanity's emptiness, and last but not least, uh, double wire taps. Wire taps uh, is absolutely amazing since it's able to protect your monsters from uh, being hit by traps and stuff like that. So this is it for my trap lineup. I cut down the third phoenix chain for the mirror force, but trust me, guys, uh, nobody is gonna expect this card. It's just used as a surprise factor, uh, and it's just a great card in general, mirror force. Uh, so yeah. So that is it for my main deck. I play a 40 card main deck. Now off to my side deck. The side deck is, uh, to be honest, uh, optional for you guys. If you guys uh, want to change change anything into the side deck, uh, go ahead. But this is what I have so far as a rough draft for what you guys may want to play on the upcoming format. So I played one Macrocosmos, one D Fisher, uh, really good against Burning Abyss. Uh, so yeah, and of course Shadows as well. One Dust Tornado for the Pendulum matchup. Uh, double Breakthrough skill. Uh, the third Phoenix Chain. Double Fairy Weaven. Uh, one Soul Drain. Triple Shadow and Praising Mirror uh, for the Shadow matchup and, of course, the Burning Abyss. One Regeki. Uh, of course, since I didn't main Regeki, I will uh, definitely side the Regeki. And last but not least, double Forbidden Lance uh, for our side deck. Now off to our uh, extra deck. Uh, let's start off with the uh, Rank 5s. Uh, of course, I play double Castellar Pleiades. Uh, Pleiades is self-explanatory. Uh, Pleiades uh, is just very problematic to deal with, uh, especially when you have in first turn. You're able to control your own board by recycling your own cards, and you can just bounce back your opponent's monsters and stuff like that. So Pleiades is absolutely amazing. So double Pleiades. Uh, one Castellar uh, M7. M7 is great. You know, uh, you overlay it over your use uh, Castellar monsters and stuff like that. So M7 is great. One Tyrus, one Zen Mayo, and one uh, Vocal Source, and one Gyre Charger. Uh, that is it for our big ranks. And guys, Zen Mayo is a good card. You know, being able to just you know pop two of your opponents back row is absolutely amazing. Uh, and same for Vocal Source. Vocal Source is self-explanatory in this deck. You know, uh, pop popping a, a monster, then you know overlay for Gyre Charger to attack is great. Same thing with Tyrus. Tyrus, um. You know, I think Tyrus is still good, but the downside about him is that he has to attack to activate his effect, and sometimes D Prison may be a problem. So yeah, uh, you know, just but overall, Tyrus is still a good card. Um, yeah, aside from that, so that is it for our big ranks. Uh, up to rank fours, double Omega. Omega is the god in the deck. Omega is so good. Uh, being able to just summon Omega, poking your opponent for uh, damage is absolutely amazing. Trust me, no one is really gonna unless they have something to stop Omega. Like you know, it'll literally cost two cards to stop. Uh, Stop alone Omega, uh, which is uh, really, really good. You know, Omega just baits out two cards already. So uh, I love to play double Omega. You know, pushing for 2400 is pretty big. And after you're done using your materials, you just overlay into uh, M7. So double Omega. Uh, one Ragna Zero against a, a Clifford matchup since, you know, you they have cards like Sacrifice and stuff like that. You're able to just plus one by activating Ragna Zero's effect to destroy that. And then you draw a card. So one Ragna Zero. Uh, one Exciter Knight. One Star Leech. Uh, I want to even bump Star Leech after two since Star Leech is such an amazing card. It reduces your opponent's monster attack to zero and its effect is negated. And when this card is destroyed, you draw a card. So you plus one uh, in the end uh, anyways. One Castell. 
uh, one on arc, and last but not least, one Abyss Dweller to round off our rank 4 XYZs. So I hope you guys enjoyed this Consular deck profile. Thank you guys so much uh, for watching my uh, YouTube videos, guys. Stay tuned for more uh, deck profiles for the January 1st, 2015 format. Thank you so much, guys, uh, for watching my videos. Please subscribe for more Yu-Gi-Oh! videos, guys. And don't, to get, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. Stay tuned for more deck profiles pack openings and of course do videos and let me know down in the, in the comment section, section below what you guys think about this deck i'm sorry if this uh, video took a little bit long but yeah you know i try to explain to you guys all my reasons on the cards that i play um in this deck thank you so much for watching and team sounds sam signing out peace